Hello and welcome to Anatomy with Dr. P. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at connective tissue, our second major type of tissue found in the body. Connective tissue is used to protect, connect, and support the other tissues of the body. It has fewer cells, more extracellular matrix, and a lower rate of mitosis compared to epithelium. Connective tissues are generally classified into two major categories. The first category is connective tissue proper. Connective tissue proper provides general support functions and can be subdivided into loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. The second category is specialized connective tissue. Specialized connective tissues provide specific functions in the body in addition to their general support functions. Keep in mind that different sources often categorize connective tissues differently. For example, adipose tissue, which we'll be talking about in another video, is sometimes classified as a loose connective tissue or as a specialized connective tissue. We're going to begin our exploration of connective tissue proper by looking at loose connective tissues. Our first type of loose connective tissue is aurelier tissue. The word aurelier means little space in Latin and is a fitting name for this tissue. The slide we're currently looking at is a mesentery, a structure that anchors organs in the abdomen. Let's zoom in so we can get a better look at this aurelier tissue. Notice how this tissue has sparse, irregular networks of collagen fibers and elastic fibers with all of these cells scattered between them. This tissue is always found beneath epithelium and its primary function is to bind and support the epithelium that sits above it. Our next type of loose connective tissue is called adipose tissue. The slide we're currently looking at shows a lymph node. While there are several interesting structures present on the slide, we're gonna focus just on the adipose tissue side of it. So let's zoom in and get a better look at this tissue. So as we zoom in, we can see the adipose tissue showing up here. Notice how this tissue is mostly composed of adipocytes, fat cells. While these cells look empty, most of the inside is taken up by a large fat storing vacuole. The nucleus and cytoplasm are pushed to the outside of the cell and create this ring-like appearance. Now, one thing to note is that adipose tissue is used to insulate the body and store energy. We're going to classify it as a loose connective tissue, but be aware that other sources may classify it as a specialized connective tissue. Let's move on to look at dense connective tissues. This slide shows a tendon and contains dense regular connective tissue. Let's zoom in. So as we zoom in here, we get a nice look at this dense regular connective tissue. So first thing we notice is how the fibers are tightly packed together and run in the same general direction. This creates a wavy patterned appearance, which is why we use the terms dense and regular. This type of connective tissue is incredibly strong and able to resist stress in one direction because all of the fibers are aligned along that same route. Our next type of dense connective tissue is called dense irregular connective tissue. The slide we're looking at should be familiar because we saw it earlier in lab. We can see the two layers present in this thick skin slide. 
The upper layer, which is shown in this dark purple, is the epidermis and contains a keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. But we're going to be focusing down here on this lower layer, the dermis. So let's zoom in so that we can see the tissue present here in the dermis. Now, as we zoom in, the first thing that we notice is how the fibers are very tightly packed together. However, notice how they're all running in different directions. This is why we use the terms dense and irregular to describe this type of tissue. It's a dense, irregular connective tissue. Dense, irregular connective tissue is able to resist stress in multiple different directions because of the random orientation of its fibers. This allows the skin to move in multiple directions without tearing. 